Hey family, welcome back. Today we are talking about essential apps for musicians. Uh, these are what I think are the top apps that every musician should have on their phone um, in 2020. So it's roughly going to break down into apps that I think are really useful for practicing, um, apps that are maybe valuable more for songwriting or uh, composing, and apps that are just kind of general utility or gigging apps that I found to be very useful and wanted to share with you. Now, I've got an iPhone, so these are iPhone apps, but they pretty much all have an Android equivalent. All right, before we get into it, we are on that drive to 1,000 subscribers. Make sure you hit like and gently touch subscribe, then leave a comment below with the apps that you find most useful as a musician. All right, we're gonna start with apps that are good for practice. Now, I think the num We're gonna start with apps that are useful. Oh, there we go. We're gonna start with apps that are useful for practicing. Now, I think the number one app that every musician should have is some form of metronome. I use Pro Metronome. I like it because it's got both kind of the simple usage of just spin the dial, pick a tempo and hit play. It's got a tap tempo function. You can choose the um, kind of pitch of the different beats. And then you can get into more advanced features like a disappearing metronome, polyrhythms, choosing different subdivisions. It's kind of all baked in there, but you don't have to do it all. You can have it just function as a simple metronome. It doesn't take too long to learn. The next app I think everyone should have is some form of tuner. Um, if, even if you're a drummer, you should carry a tuner. Uh, at some point, someone's going to have forgotten their tuner and just having that on your phone makes it really easy. Uh, it's, it's a lifesaver. Um, now, as far as which tuner app to use, there's anything from Tuner Lite or Instuner to something more advanced like uh, the Total Energy TE Tuner. Um, there's a lot of bells and whistles in that. Really, I think any tuner will do. All right, another practice app that I've found invaluable is iReal Pro. iReal Pro is basically a play along app. Um, you've got drums and piano accompaniment. You can choose uh, different songs, but it also is really easy to go in there and edit the chords, um, edit the feel. It gives you, uh, you can shrink it down to just kind of a few chords that you want to practice along with. Um, it's an overall great app, especially for jazz musicians, but you can simplify the chords. It doesn't have to only be used for jazz. Another app people should have is just a basic piano app. Um, I use one that's called Piano, right? There's nothing to it. It's just every once in a while you hear something and you'll want to pick out that melody. And if you can't get it with ear training, it's helpful to have the piano there and just kind of plunk it out to know what it is. All right, now the last practice app I'm going to cover is Pandora. All right, dude. It's 2020. Why on earth would I be recommending Pandora, right? Are you serious? How old am I, right? Okay, here's the deal. Uh, full disclosure, I did work for Pandora several years ago. However, I no longer own any stock. There's no kind of financial uh, compensation going on here. And uh, well, I do still have some friends that work there, but it's really not about that either. What it's about is playing along with the radio, right? One of the best things you can do as a musician is put yourself in a situation where you're playing something that you're unfamiliar with and you have to react to it in real time. Now, Pandora is better than anything else out there by far at picking the next song. Now, you have to tune that radio station. You wanna go in, you wanna make sure you use your thumbs up and your thumbs down. Probably more important is to thumb down the songs you don't like. But being able to set yourself up with a station that is all tuned towards the music that you like and yet is playing a lot of music that you haven't heard is just a great formula for success. And I've made that a part of my daily practice routine is to put that on and play along with it um, and you know learn the songs. And if I already know the bass line, then I'm learning the melody to it or I'm learning the chords or something as it's going along. And then I'm hearing songs that I don't know. And I'm also hearing artists that I've never heard before and learning about new artists. So all of that is fantastic for your ear. All right, the next section of apps to cover are apps related to writing music and songwriting. So to start with, I use Voice Record Pro. Um, you need some kind of basic voice recorder. What I like about Voice Record Pro is number one, it's got a level meter so I can make sure that I'm not distorting. And number two, it's really easy to share uh, files. I can share them to Dropbox. I can share them via email. Number of ways I like the way that that's built into the app and it's just super simple to use. All right, now as far as tracking parts on a phone, um, if you wanna write you know, actual instrumental parts and have them out there, the app that I think is the best out there is N-Track. That said, I think they're all like a little bit fiddly. I don't tend to do this a lot on a phone. I would rather do it on my computer. Um, but if I'm in a bind, that's the app that I'll use. Now geared more towards songwriters is an app I love called Writer Session. 
here, when you start a session, you can record quick vocal parts. Um, but where I really think it hits its stride is in the lyrics section. As you write your lyrics, it also has an integrated rhyming dictionary, a thesaurus, a regular dictionary. It's just got a lot of valuable tools on the lyric writing side. And so that's mostly what I use it for. All right, now we're gonna jump into apps that are useful um, for gigging or just general useful utilities overall. Uh, the first one I'll start with is dB meter. It's really important to protect your hearing and understand uh, both how loud the environment is and how loud you are. So dB meter tells you how many decibels, super easy to use. You can record it, kind of track it throughout a song um, and see, you know, are you sounding like a library or are you sounding like an airplane, right? Um, another app that is great is some form of live tempo detection. Now you can use Live BPM, which is uh, gives you a little bit more fine tuning, or you can use an app called Tempe. Um, both of them work very well. Now one thing to know about them is that you have to pick a range of tempos for the song. So if you set it to only detect tempos between 80 and 160 beats per minute, and the song is 70 beats per minute, then it's probably going to guess that that song is 140 beats per minute, which can be like a little bit odd. Um, but once you get the hang of that, uh, it's it's really no big deal, um, and it's great because you. You can use it to, you know, one, how fast is the song? So I know I can record that and practice that for later. Um, but you can also record your own tempo as you're going through a song and see, you know, are you rushing? Are you dragging? How are you holding it together? It's a great, great feedback mechanism. All right. The other super useful tool is iBook, free app comes with the iPhone, um, probably use this honestly more often on my tablet, but basically you can put all of your PDFs of song charts in iBook and use them as you go through the gig. Easy, simple, gets it done. All right, then the last two apps I'm gonna go through are SoundHound. Now, SoundHound is, uh, Shazam is another variant of it, but the idea is a song is playing and you're like, oh, what's the song? You click a button and it listens and it tells you what song it is. Now, it doesn't always work. Uh, it certainly works better for uh, pop tunes or classical, it might guess the uh, name of the composition, but not the actual recording of the composition. Um, the reason that I prefer SoundHound is because SoundHound also at least sometimes works when you hum a song into it um, in case you're not hearing the original source of that audio. And then the last app that I would recommend, and this is a little bit more esoteric, is an app called Oblique Strategies. Now, Brian Eno came up with these Oblique Strategies. They're originally a set of cards, um, and it's just ways to think about problems differently, um, often music related. So check it out. It's pretty fun. Okay, thanks for watching. Check some of these apps out. Again, let me know below what you think is super useful for you as a musician, and take it easy.